I wonder if there's more symbolism behind the choice of the dandelion. Two more chapters this week in the Wind and Truth Raffo read-along! Thank you to my patrons for making this possible. Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, hope you're doing better, Mythicarone, Gallandagus, The Son of James, Lexar and Talap, and 42! Chapter 19, finally a Zeth POV! Kaladin's voice is perfectly audible while flying, as wind running allows for sculpting the airflow. Zeth can't do that as a skybreaker, so it must be related to adhesion making the air molecules stick to each other so sound can transmit through them better? That power has implications. Nail said he can use division, but his spren says no. They make it to a patch of soil, growing a dandelion, the most beautiful of weeds. Zeth's high spren is a jerk. Don't get emotional about seeing a symbol of your homeland that you've been denied for 10 years. Oh look, a dandelion must be the last one of the season. I've heard speculation that the reason we haven't learned his high spren's name is because it's less important. Some might say auxiliary. Zeth has always been ruled by voices. Those flashbacks better start answering some questions. He calls out Kaladin on his, uh, empathy. They pass over the Misted Mountains and into Shinovar. Are we here yet? Maybe next chapter. Chapter 20! Back to the Monarch meeting. Navani hears a conversation between the sibling and the Stormfather being worried about new odium. Nudium. Nope. Storm Daddy confirms a change in rhythms. The sibling misses when the Stormfather was happier? Might that be before Tanavast died and Honor became part of the High Storm? His response to Raze's death seems more personal than you'd expect from a spren. Wit hints at the destruction of gods. For a deity, breaking a promise exposes them to destructive forces from others, and the magnitude of the broken promise often determines the severity of the consequence. Was Race somehow bopping around the cosmos getting shards to break serious promises, opening them up to destruction, and then he got roped into his own promise to stay on Roshar? The sibling is surprised by the hollow map made by Stargile. Did the Radiance really not do this before? It seemed so natural for Dalinar and Shallan the first time. The Mink is figuring out battle strategy, while Adolin quietly narrates for Maya. Best boy. The sibling beams into the room and reiterates the tactical superiority of the tower. Adolin volunteers to lead an elite team to hold Azimir. It seems he won't be joining Shallan in the spiritual realm. Yasna's headed to Thalen City, since she's got experience sealing up those walls with bronze. Sigzil's gonna be over the Shattered Plains, and I can't help but worry he's going to fail. Dalinar is hesitant to send Adolin, and when Adolin relates the information from Shallan about the Ghost Bloods, things take a turn for the personal. Dalinar approves a strike force and does a bondsmithing on Adolin to allow him to speak a zish. And that's it. No reconciliation whatsoever. Oh no. I don't know which situation I like worse, Gavinor being Odium's champion or Adolin. But at this point, my money's on one of the two of them. Comment below or let me know in my Discord your theories about this week's chapters, and I'll read and find out. What's that?